so we got the Vodafone booth right here, and uh, who are you? Uh, my name's Kate Arthur Gray. I'm head of communications at a German space startup called PT Scientists, and we're running Mission to the Moon. So it's called missiontothemoon.com. With dashes uh, in between, right? We have dashes in between. So missiontothemoon.com. But if you just Google Mission to the Moon, or if you go to ptscientist.com, you'll find all of the information there. And uh, you, you, you are, what's going on here? Are you, are you actually right. going to the moon? Let's start at the beginning. Is this so gonna yes, happen? this is going to happen. This is a real mission to the moon. And is what it, you see, real stuff? what you I mean, see on real, the left um, here, is replica, our real size. Yeah. So this is a one-to-one -one, uh, engineering model, structural engineering model of our Alina spacecraft. Okay. And, and this is what we're going to send to the moon with two Audi Luna Quattro rovers inside. So rovers? Yes. So one of the things that we want to do with this mission is actually we want to return to the Apollo 17 landing sites and get the first uh, high quality images of the original lunar roving vehicle. Really? It's You're going to land there? It's been, we're going to do that very carefully. That's awesome. Because then the, the flat earthers or whatever they call the moon, moon deniers, <laughs> They're gonna have proof that well, you think unless so. they're gonna tell you, you they're gonna tell so, you that you're gonna tell pictures in in another so, uh, studio. Gene Cernan, who's uh, sadly passed away now, is one of the Apollo 17 uh, moonwalkers, and actually on his way to the moon, he did say that he could confirm the moon was round, <laughs> but apparently they still don't believe that. <coughs> the flat anyway. mooners. Yeah. Is there some but of those? Flat, well, I'm not sure about that. Okay. Um, anyway, so this is our spacecraft, and we are partnering. We have two key technology partners in Audi, who are helping us with the, the rovers, and Vodafone, who are helping us uh, with the communications on the lunar surface. Is so, it complicated? Is it not going to be easy? Space is hard. Space even, is always even the hard. Moon, we can see it from here. We can see it, but, but I mean, hard to communicate to it. Have you ever tried walking there? No. no. So one of the things we have to do is that. Our rovers are quite small, and they are going to be collecting an awful lot of data. This is size one to one. Yep, this is absolutely uh, same size as our rover. It's just a mock-up of the rover, and uh, actually, I have here one of the the wheels that we'll be using. Um, What's special about this? Is oh. it a standard way to do a moon, moon this is, wheel? Actually, the, the really nice thing about this is that it's uh, 3D printed from aluminium, and the reason that we've done that is that it's incredibly light, and with the 3D printing process, you can. I don't know if you can see inside here, but all of these ridges are actually hollow, so we're saving a lot of weight. So actually, you are actually going to 3D print the Mars, uh, no, the moon rover. Uh, about about 80 percent of the structure of the it's lunar rover is 3D, 3D printed from aluminium. Yep, yeah, for the real deal, and that's one of the things we're working with Audi on. But when this rover here in the front, you can see these kind of these eyes in the front. Yeah. They are actually on cameras, and they'll be taking HD video from the lunar surface. HD or 4K or no? HD, proper HD. We cannot do 4K? Uh, I'm not sure. It would be great to have some 4K footage from the moon. That would be great to have great stuff. Have well, if we're right? trying to get the, the, the proper... Um, How soon is it going to launch? So we're hoping to launch at the end of next year. That soon? Hopefully. So you've been, you've been working Listen, on this for a while. We've been working on this for about 10 years now. Because yeah. you just said startup. It's not a even startup? When they first began, it wasn't really so much of a company. They were called originally the part-time scientists. And they were inspired by the Google Lunar X Prize. So yeah. this uh, Google-sponsored XPRIZE was to land a rover on the moon, drive 500 meters, and then What's send that? HD video back. But it's there. Well, we have now created so it. So why don't well, they give you the $20 million? Because it's not on the moon yet. Because we actually have extended our mission to do more than just, with like, if you're going all the way to the moon, don't just like drive 500 meters and stop. So we've actually included uh, scientific payloads on our mission. Uh, we have a payload rack on the side, it's on the other yeah. side of the, of Alina. So what's going to be there? So over here as well. You I stand mean, right there? It's, uh, yeah. it's your choice, really. If you would yeah. like to send a, uh, some payload with us, you can do that. So this is I'm a... going to sell some space. Yeah. These are a CubeSat, which is a... Sorry, it's a CubeSat size box. So it's a 10 centimeter cube. This is a very standard format now in, um, in satellites. And one of the things that has made uh, space a little bit more accessible is these uh, very small satellites, nano satellites. So even like students at university are able to design their own satellites. It's like ten, twenty thousand dollars a satellite. Much cheaper than a huge, yeah. you know, billion plus kind of yeah. thing. But all this lovely data that we're collecting with our lunar rover is—it's very expensive to send that data. When I say expensive, I mean in terms of power budget. Like sending all of the data back down to Earth from from the rover, it needs a lot of power. And our small little rover doesn't have that power. So we're going to work with Vodafone to create the first base station, the first 4G LTE 
base station on the moon. Nice. And what that allows us to do then is to take the, uh, the data from the rover, all this HD video, all the scientific data that we're collecting, we can take it from the rover, send it back to our base station, Alina, which is our lander, and Alina, which is not moving anywhere, has much nice. larger solar panels, much more power, and can send all of that data back down to us on Earth. So what's the range of a 4G LTE in the moon? How well, far do you think the rover's going to go? We actually have a very interesting uh, conference, press conference that's coming up tomorrow, so I can't tell you too ah, much more. Right okay, so how about but this? Have uh, is this part of your project right here also? You're going to have a... That's not for the moon, right? No, that's, that's not a moon... Uh, moon uh, I just do the moon. But, uh, so... Come on, the moon no, is no, not no. enough. Oh, of course, this is <laughs> awesome. This, what, what are we looking at in here? Uh, so these are our propellant tanks. This, so this is our whole lander. Um, landing legs, propellant tanks, payload racks, solar panels, and of course the... Um, Don't they need to be uh, like separated panel. somehow for some kind of... No, that's how everything is... I leave that bit to the rocket scientists. The rocket scientists have cal calculated everything? Yep. All right. So next year, end of next year, are you going to launch that's on a space, SpaceX? Yeah, so we decided that having built our own lander and built our rovers, we didn't need to go ahead and build our own rocket because it's, you know, this is rocket science. This is hard stuff. And why bother when there are already companies out there that actually have a business in selling launches? So, for example, so SpaceX. So these guys can help you buy a launch, right? So we're, like so we're going to be um, probably on a uh, SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. And what that will do is it will take our spacecraft up into Earth orbit. And from Earth orbit, Alina, under its own propulsion, will take itself uh, into lunar orbit before landing softly on the moon and releasing our two little rovers. Soft landing on the moon. Yep. So uh, it says on here some of the stuff that it says, um, bring back Apollo. That's one of your slogans, uh, right? Well, as so we're returning to Apollo. So return, this, this return, to, Apo yeah, uh, return, return to, Apollo. to Apollo. So yeah, the last time that humans were on the moon was back in 1972. And we actually want to land in the same kind of area that they landed so that we can get the first, as I said, the first um, high definition pictures of the lunar roving vehicle. It's been sitting on the moon for 45 years and we just don't know what state it's in. Is it still in one piece? Has it all collapsed? It was covered in dust. We want to find out the information. There's no moon wind. But there is, in fact, one of the experiments that we might be taking up is to look at <coughs> potentially how there could be lunar dust um, kind of swirling around depending on the um, electrostatic charge on either side of the terminator, so the, the line between day and night. So what's the success? Uh, for this one, how long does it need to last for it to be success? If we, because, uh, if we land on the moon, for me that's a success. That is, okay. that is something that nobody has, no private mission would have ever done. And we are a, you know, a fully commercial mission. We're not NASA, we're not ESA, this is a fully private mission. So that would be a success. So the, uh, the PT Scientist HQ is actually in Berlin, and that's where we have our lunar test bed, our facilities, that's where our offices are. And that's where we're going to have our mission control for the mission. Do you have support from the government or something? No, as, as I said, this is, a pri this is, this is a, primarily a, a private funded initiative. We are, of course, open to working you know, with other space uh, agencies if they would like to send some payload with us. That's something that we look to do. And of course, in future, we hope to be the infrastructure provider for, you know, for the moon. So yeah, for, um, for transport and also for communications. You know, if we can put LTE on the moon, that means that future missions would, you know, they don't need to recreate the wheel, they don't need to recreate their own communication structure, they could actually just tap in and use LTE. How about uh, 2022 uh, holiday vacation uh, uh, destination, uh, potentially, for you, for the, oh, for I would the staff? I would, I would very much love that. Like I would love that. At the moment, we're just a fully robotic mission. Um, of course, I would love to be the first woman on the moon. I, I think that's probably going to be a Chinese lady, but we'll see. Um, I think if you, if you successfully land this one and the rover works around, you have priority on the Elon Musk uh, list of uh, potential passengers. Unless he decides that he wants to do it first. He's really interested in Mars. But, of course, the moon too. But, uh, so, because the, the Mars rovers, they were supposed to just work for like, I, I think it was something like three months. But now it's been working for like 10 years. They got really lucky with the, the wind on Mars sweeping all the dust off the uh, solar panels, so yeah. So it could happen that it's just going to drive for a long time. That, 
it's unlikely to happen on our mission actually. So the length of our mission, um, for this initial mission we're not designing it to survive the lunar night. And when it, the lunar night is a, you know, it's almost a fortnight and it goes down to like minus 173 centigrade. Is that too hard to design for that? The problem with that is that all your electronics, you have to design your electronics so that they can uh, withstand that that really low temperature, yeah. two weeks of that low temperature before they, I mean, there is a chance it could all work. And, you know, maybe it will come back to life after the lunar night, but that's not something we're designing for right now. How long is the lunar day? Again, it's about two weeks. So you're designing for two weeks at least? Okay. So we will probably land um, like one or two Earth days into the lunar day yeah. to ensure that we get the right amount of, uh, you know, right angle of sunshine for our uh, sunlight on our solar panels. And we reckon we'll probably have a mission time, you know, on surface mission time of about 10 to 11 days. And who are you sending the exclusive TV TV coverage to? Well, I'd, if I no, told I, you that, I'd have okay. to kill you. Where? There's a camera out there. So that's the broadcasting. That's the that's the camera right there. Is there some cameras up here too? Uh, not currently, because this is just a like I said, it's a structural model. So this is to just test the structure of the of the vehicle. If, if this works out, you, you, you can have billions of viewers. You can have. It's going to be huge. Well, this is one of the things that we really want to do. So the founder of the company is quite young. So he, like me, wasn't around to watch. You know the Saturn V launch and to watch the the lunar landings. And what we would like to do is is kind of recreate that excitement about the moon but for a gener like our generation. You know we want to create an Apollo moment to show this is possible. You can do this stuff. I think if, if, it, if it works, your video is going to be more popular than Kanye style. <laughs> that's that's like a, a given. It's going to be so cute. I would hope so. So you have to think of uh, what music to put with the video or something. Trust me, we're thinking. Just make it a uh, creative comments. Let people do whatever they want for your footage, right? So, you we, we have to find ways to fund our mission, so oh, it's likely that we're going to the logos there. there. You know, fund the logos. The Falcon 9 or the Falcon Heavy. You don't, want a Fal you don't need a Falcon Heavy. We don't need a Falcon Heavy. No, we don't even need a whole Falcon 9. It's, it's much lighter. Okay.